This train is a football special. It's one of dozens taking the faithful to the faraway worship of their favorite team. But this train is a little different because this is the Blue Arrow. For a start, it looks a little different. The coaches and the actual engine are painted a smart blue livery. And more importantly, on this train, there'll be absolutely no trouble because this is the train of Ipswich Town Supporters Club and they claim to be the best behaved fans in all the land. There's 450 of them on this trip. 250 miles and six hours of potential boredom lie ahead. So from the very start, the emphasis is on entertainment. Good morning, everybody. And that swinging little number tells you that once again, you're listening to the programs of your very own Blue Arrow Broadcast Service. And this is Reg Farman, your station manager, saying, welcome on board this first Blue Arrow of the season. Glad to have you with us. Hope you enjoy the trip. And now, it's wake up at the back there for your actual Chris Barber and Bugle Call Rag. Radio Blue Arrows cost the supporters £1,400, and they give it most of the credit for creating the right sort of family atmosphere. We have run trips without music, without any entertainment at all, and they're just another long, boring train journey. With this, the journey passes quickly, and everyone enjoys it, and they're part of the action. What's the main purpose of the radio? To, enter um, to entertain, to inform, and to keep things moving. The accent is on communication. The club cares about its members, and it lets them know it. There's a continual service of new sheets and pencil and paper games, turned out by a busy typing pool of volunteer secretaries. No one on board's allowed to feel left out, and the fans get a kick out of the special treatment. It's marvellous, really, you know. You sort of know everybody when you... Everybody's very friendly. Yeah, yeah, you get to know... You get to know them. I've been on several. This is about my tenth, I think. Well, if we do cause trouble on the train, like wrecking it and that, we're only going to get chucked off and we have to walk. But we just want to keep the train. We want to keep it going to other places. Like You're a skinhead, aren't you? Well, I don't really like being called one, but I suppose I am. I thought they were supposed to cause trouble. Why don't you do that when you're on the Blue Arrow? Well, as you just said, you know, we want to keep it. Well, I don't like causing trouble, you know, but sort of people pick on me, so they're willing to fight me, I'll sort of fight them, you know. But not on the train? Not on the train, no. Well, the train itself's great, but you've not got a cross-section of the supporters on it. I mean, you've not got the skinheads and the yobs coming by a train, they're thumbing it down the road. I mean, it's a natural thing, they won't, they won't travel by a train because they're under supervision. I mean, if they're travelling by themselves, they know they can lark about, have a bit of fun, and it won't cause trouble. But when they're under supervision, they're terrified. They won't uh, do anything wrong then. Because they know if they're caught, they're in for it. Whatever the pros and cons, the radio on rails makes the journey seem shorter. And now I'd like to introduce you to one of the growing group of American servicemen who follow the town, Sergeant Bob Branker, to discuss with him how today's game might go. Well, Bob, how do you see it going this afternoon? Well, we've had a little bad patch here in the beginning of the season, but I think we could come away with a point here. I believe, honestly, that the uh, town's defensive side is really fit, and uh, Manchester's, granted, had a good run, but uh, I think the town's coming up there to come away with a point, really. And do you see a draw as the only thing we can hope for? No, do you think we no, can get the two no points? I think we could get two points, but I, I, just like many other people, I like to think these away matches, if you come away with one, you've, you've at least got half the... Uh, Manchester, journey's end. Other fans are met by police dogs and the riot act, but not Ipswich. So having travelled hopefully, the Ipswich fans have now arrived and off they go to the match. But Ipswich's chances aren't all that good. So far this season, they're pretty low in the table. <laughs> Well, rather as I expected, Ipswich were on the losing end. Now all that remains is the long journey back home, with nothing much to be happy about. On most football trains, 
This is the danger time, when communication cords are ripped out of the walls and mirrors are smashed with reckless disregard for good fortune. But on this train, that won't happen. Hello everybody, leastways, I hope everybody made the train on time. We're on our way, we've a long way to go, and we've lots of good stuff for you. And right now, here's David Huxley to introduce the interviews with the players that he recorded in the dressing rooms after the, today's game. It's a pity we lost David, but perhaps you can tell us more about it as a result of your interviews. Well, as usual, Brian Knight and I went along to the dressing rooms. We recorded some interviews with all the boys and with Bobby Robson, and here they are. Any comments on the game? A long silence. Well, I suppose if people, when people hear the result that we've just lost 2-1 at Manchester United, they would think it's a, a good performance. There are plenty of explanations and excuses. In an exclusive Radio Blue Arrow after the match interview with the team manager. By the time the bars open, you could be fooled that Ipswich had actually won. Everyone's happy, the way the train manager likes it. Well, we feel that um, probably the nature of the East Anglin is that, um, you know, you have to take the good with the bad. Uh, we like to win, but we probably wouldn't um, raise the rooftops like the big cities would if we did win. Uh, equally so, of course, we accept that uh, a loss is not the end of the world and uh, let's get on with the job and we look forward to the next trip. Well, the bar here is doing yes. very big business. Yes. Does this cause any trouble to you? Uh, none whatsoever. The only restriction we place on travellers is that um, we do not sell spirits to them, beer only. We find that this is the safest way, bearing in mind that um, we carry a lot of youngsters on this train and um, let's face it, if the youngsters are not watched all the while, they could easily get spirits. We feel this could bring us problems, so to alleviate this problem, no spirits on the train, beer only, soft drinks, etc., and they seem to be quite happy with it. You say it's the stolid East Anglian character, which means Probably. that you have no trouble, yes. but obviously, even in East Anglia, there are there hooligans. Are right, yes. Oh, yes. What would you do if um, trouble broke well, out? We would feel that our stewards on the trains are well schooled after, what, two seasons plus a game this season, that uh, the first sign of any trouble they would, just a quiet word here, a firm word, would suffice. But should this um, not meet the case, then we've got other plans that we could, in fact, put into operation. What are these plans? Well, the plans are that, um, obviously, the committee would be called, myself being in charge of the train, and we would try and placate this problem. If we couldn't, we would stop the train at the first mainline station and the police would be summoned and the offenders would be taken off and they would be charged on behalf of the Infrastone Football Club Supporters Committee. Ipswich have been consulted on train management by Spurs and offer their advice to any other club. But they're not killjoys. If you want to sing, you can sing. Or maybe you've won a prize in the radio raffle. Or perhaps you want to sleep. And as the train comes across the fens and through the autumn fields of Suffolk, the radio men find they're losing at least some of their audience. And that brings to an end our evening's entertainment for you. Good night, all. So here we are back at Ipswich at nearly midnight. It's been 16 hours since we left, and now these stewards are busy making sure that the train is handed back to British Rail, clean and intact. Of course, not all Ipswich Town supporters travel by Blue Arrow. Obviously, Blue Arrow isn't the whole answer to the soccer hooliganism problem, but perhaps other supporters' clubs will find that this mixture of pop music and personal treatment will keep their soccer specials, like the Blue Arrow, permanently out of the headlines.